Man, got around. OG Silver back here. And today, like each and every day, I'm going to share with you guys some stories and allegories. Some from my personal life, some from things I've seen and stuff that I've actually experienced to give you stories of victory and glory to help you understand the victory of sometimes it's better to learn from other people's mistakes, dude, than to, to do them yourself because some mistakes you can't undo them. And the glory of understanding, it's always best to learn what not to do because once you're fucked, you can't get unfucked. So without further ado, I'm getting to the top of today's video, which is in maximum security prison, a hard head makes you have a soft butt filled with wet, sticky liquids. So guys, I had to make this title. A lot of you guys say, oh, gee, your titles killed me or your titles made me watch the video. I had to make this title because when I was a kid, they had a saying that the OGs used to say to the youngsters. And I think that's part of the problem with our society today. Like youngsters nowadays don't respect their elders. They don't respect OGs. They feel like they running shit. They savages. They wild animals. They beasts. Maybe they, they never had a father. Maybe they were raised by single mothers. Maybe they was raised in the streets. But they never was around a strong male to make them feel like they want to respect this dude, look up to this dude. So I understand, baby. But I'm just trying to, I'm in the last quarter of my life. I'm just trying to undo all the wrong shit I did. Because sometimes, bro, I think about the shit I did when I was in my teens and 20s, man, and, 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 and 30s. And I cry, man, because, you know, it's not, it's not cool to be violent to other human beings who are weaker or softer or smaller than you or less trained. Dude, that doesn't make you a warrior. You know, to me, that makes you a bully, bro. But, you know, that's just, uh, <clears throat> I was ignorant back then. Now that I'm wise, I'm into Zen Buddhism. I'm trying to pass on the lessons of an OG, an older gentleman to you young guys, so you can detour that path that I went and choose another path. Like those of the dozens of you have been fortunate to have coaching calls with me where I've laced you with the knowledge of my experiences so you don't have to experience what I've experienced. So anyway, I wanted to say that to you because when I was a youngster, they had a phrase saying, a hard head makes a saw behind. And this is what it meant back then, and I want to share this with you. So back when I was a kid, you were in school, whether you were in elementary school or grade school, if you were to do something wrong, you can Google it. This is back in the 60s. The teacher would have a paddle, and they could put you over their, their knee and paddle you. So your, your behind would be really bruised and soft, and it would be hard to sit down because it's tender. That's what it means. They tenderize you. Like, have you ever had a steak? And you try to make it, you know, edible, you tenderize it, right? So that's where that's where the, the thing uh, 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 that's where the thing a hard hit makes it soft behind, right? So I added it to you, I put some maximum security salt on it for you, because I know you don't like unsalted food. And I put on there in maximum security prison, a hard head makes you have a soft butt filled with wet, sticky liquids. And to keep this YouTube friendly, you guys know what a wet, sticky liquid is and you're a butt. You know what that is. So I don't need to define it for you. But I wanted to share this with you because I'm on here and I talk to you young guys and there's still like, I break it down into, I break it down into quarters. Like there's, 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 you know, there's, there's a, a fifth is a quarter. No, I think a quarter is a fourth. There's always one quarter, you guys, man, coming here with your silly ass comments because you don't, I can tell you don't know shit. You ain't never been nowhere and you've been listening to your homies and they got you all pumped up with bravado and shit. You a South soldier. You a fucking keyboard warrior. I can tell, man, because the shit you say, I know for a fact you never say it to my face because you was a soft motherfucker. This is how I know. Savages do. Don't, don't, don't yell and scream and yell and cry out before they attack you. They just talk to you calmly. If you can't reach a resolution, they just eliminate you. They don't be typing the bullshit you're talking about. Oh, man, you lying. Are you making it? This shit, this dude's a J-cat. No, this fucking shit. And who talks like that? Man, shut the fuck up. If you had the experience I've had, you'd be mentally deranged too, motherfucker. So count your blessings that you can learn from my experiences and not experience it yourself. So what does that got to do with today's video, man? I want to tell you something. When an older dude is talking to you, bro, and he doesn't have a hidden agenda. I'm not trying to get money from you. I'm not trying to have sex with you. I'm not trying to cuddle with you. I'm not trying to get you invested in nothing. I'm just trying to make sure you don't mess off a decade of your life like I did. You should sit down and listen. And I'm not saying you should 
follow the advice that every older dude gives you, but you should sit down, ponder it, and pontificate on it, meaning like chew it up and, and think about it. Look at the pros and the cons. What Okay, is what this dude telling me, is it helpful to me? Okay, and why is it helpful to me? And how can it help me? And what is, is what he's saying makes sense? Okay, and is it believable? Is there a shred of truth in it? If it is, sit down and chew on it, man. This is how you learn. You learn from the experience of others. You learn from your experience too. But like I said, some shit you can ex you experience, you can't unexperience. Once you've seen some shit, you can't unsee it. There's some shit you don't want to see. That's why you're in maximum security prison. When you walk into your cell, never look into another man's cell because you might see some shit that's going to get you killed or get your butt cheeks split open because now you expose some dude to being gay. It's gay shot collar. And to keep your mouth shut, he's going to split your cheeks because now that you've been violated, you can't tell nobody. So never look in another man's cell. But here's the thing I want to tell you, man. I'm going to give you guys some jewels of wisdom about maximum security prison, specifically when you first touch down, how to conduct yourself so that you're known as a dude, man, that people don't want to fuck with. Why? Because you're mysterious. And here's the three things I want to share with you guys, guys. I want to share this with you. And if you don't listen to me, dude, your butt cheeks are going to be soft and, and split open and prolapse, bro. Trust me, when you walk, it's going to sound squishy like you got a fucking ocean up in your fucking anus. So here's the first one, man. When you first get to maximum security prison or even in the county jail, don't be friendly. Be mysterious, man. I see a lot of dudes that's first timers, bro. Are they small or they weak or they can't fight? Are they not gang members, dude? Or they, you know, they just don't, they don't have no way to protect themselves. And so they want to be overly friendly. They want to be looking to make friends because they think, oh, the more friends I have, the better it is that people's going to protect me. No, because in prison, man, sometimes your friends aren't your friends. They're your enemies and they're called frenemies. A dude will just get close to you and treat you nice. It's like the dude in the movie Lockdown. He offer you a candy bar so he can go ahead and go up in your butt cheeks, dude. Why somebody want to be friends? You got to ask yourself this question. Why does this dude want to be friends with me? Why? Ask yourself this question. Why does he want to be friends with me? Like what? What do I have to offer him? Now, don't, be, don't get me wrong. If you're rich, he wants to be your friend because you can give him money. Maybe he's a big dude. You can pay him for protection. But let's say you're a broke dude and you ain't got no money. What is it you can offer him? And I hate to tell you this, guys, in maximum security prison, the number one currency is booty, man. It's not money. It's not drugs. It's butt. There's so many homosexuals because when you guys guys with life, double life, triple life, natural life, come on, man. You guys do the math. Wake up, baby. Even the straightest dude, if you're in prison for the rest of your life and you and in California prisons, man, lifers can't get conjugal visits, man. So let's scratch that out. You can't get a conjugal visit where you can marry a lady and then you get to... Uh, you get to consummate your relationship or to have or to fornicate or have sex or coitus. And there's a compound on the yard where your wife comes in and they lock you in and you guys have sex for the whole weekend. Google it. Lifers can't have that. So then lifers got all this sex, this pent up sexual, pent up sexual tension, bro. And you got your little soft butt cheeks running around. Come on, man. Let's do the math, man. Don't be naive, bro. Don't drink the fucking Kool-Aid. Here's the next one, man. The reason you want to be mysterious because, dude, if you're stoic and mysterious, a man of few words, you're very quiet, you never say much, people don't know what you're thinking. A person only knows what you're thinking if you open up your mouth. That's why they tell you don't talk too much. Mostly listen. And if you answer, answer in one-word sentences, bro. One-word sentences. And if you want, I'll give you some examples in another video. But all I'm saying is you don't want to tell people your business. You know what I mean? You don't want to be getting all friendly with dudes, trying to buddy-buddy with something, because then you're going to become a butt buddy. Here's the next one, guys. Um, don't make friends in prison. Make allies. And what an ally is, when, you, when, you, when you're mysterious and you sit back, like I remember when I'd be in the chow hall while I'm eating, and I always look around. See who's affiliated with who, who's conversating with who, who's passing drugs to who, who's passing weapons to who. When I'm on the yard, I look around, who's hanging with who, who's affiliated with what. Even in the day room, I would look out in the day room and see who's associating with who. 
getting to know who's who and getting to know who's the shot caller, who's the key holders. That's the key. That's the that's the number one thing I can teach you. If you don't know, if you haven't seen that video, go Google it on there. You know, how to find out who the shot caller is in prison. And so the whole thing is this, guys. You got to keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. Just be very mysterious. And then you look. And then the people that you... I'm, I'm going to give you a good example here. And I'm not trying to... Uh, what's that word called, dude? I'm not trying to taint anybody or to turn anybody on to a bad way of life. This is what I did when I was in prison. I made friends with the dudes and I made allies with the dudes in the chow hall, the metal, the metal, metal shop, and also uh, the candy bar man. So the candy bar man, that's the key word for the guy that like every, uh, every set or click has a guy that makes knives, right? And most of the guys that make knives either work in metal shop or the kitchen. And the guards are corrupt. That's how do you get knives in the yard. The guards are supposed to pat you down when you leave the, the metal shop or the kitchen. Hey, man, guards is on the payroll, too. A lot of guards is, is gang members, but they just work for the prison. You know what I mean? It's like that movie called, uh, what's that movie called? Uh, the movie with uh, Jack Nicholson and uh, Matt Damon and uh, uh, the guy from Born Identity. Dang. Anyways, it's about these Irish cops, man, and these gangsters. And the little boy grows up. He's a gangster, but the OG tells him to become a cop. And um, I forget the name of the movie, man. Dang. But it's a good movie, man, because um, I was saying it was a, it's a Jack Nicholson movie with Matt Damon. And basically, there's a dude that's he, he's from his, his family's a family of gangsters and gang members, but they convince him to become a cop. But so he's actually working for the gang members. He's a cop, though, and I forget what it's called. Dang, it's a good movie, man. Just Google uh, Jack Nicholson and Matt Damon movie where the, 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 the gangster is a cop. The young gangster is a cop. Anyway, it's like that. Some of these correction officers are corrupt, man. I would say, dude, 99% of them are corrupt, bro. And I, I made another video about that. But all I'm saying, that's how the knives get on the yard. So I made friends with, I made allies with the guys working the kitchen. The guys that uh, the guys that worked in the kitchen, the guys that worked in the metal shop, and then the, the guys who who made the knives. So you want to make allies, not friends. And here's last but not least, man. Trust no one in prison and respect everyone, and make sure you set boundaries, dude. Trust no one, even your allies, dude. I don't trust nobody, bro. I don't trust nobody. And I'm going to make another video about that. But that's the whole thing. If you guys don't take my advice, and then God bless you, Buddha, Allah, Confucius, uh, Tayo, whoever you believe in, man, because your butt's going to belong to everybody in the penal system. And you get what you deserve because, you know, when somebody takes the time to lace you up with game, you reject it, then hell have no fury like a young dumb motherfucker whose butt cheeks is split open because he's too dumb to listen when somebody's trying to help him. So if you stuck this far in the video, give a thumbs up, motherfucker. Leave a comment, man. And then uh, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell, because I don't know next time I'm going to put up a video. And more importantly, share the video, guys. And so until next time, hold yourself back. Oh.